In this problem, I have a 1,000 watt motor. So this is the electric motor right here. And it's spinning a grinding wheel by way of a belt wrapped around a, a shaft. So drive belt is actually transmitting this power to the grinding wheel. The grinding wheel starts at rest, and the motor operates for half a second. So the first thing I want to do is just a little reminder of what power is. And power is how much work is done or how much energy is transferred divided by how long it takes. So it's a rate of energy transfer, and watts are actually the same thing as joules per second. So what do you do to find the total energy transfer if you know the power? You take power times time. And that's going to be 1,000 watts times half a second. And I get 500 joules of energy. So during this process that we're talking about, 500 joules of energy has been dumped into the rotation of this grinding wheel. In part A, I want the final angular speed of the wheel. So I have to use my expression for the rotational kinetic energy of an object in pure rotation, and that's 1 half i omega squared. Just to keep things spaced out a little, I think I'm going to compute the moment of inertia of this grinding wheel separately. And for a solid disk, you have to look up the formula for it, and it's 1 half mr squared. That gives me 1 half times the mass of this thing, that's 8 kilograms, times the radius, 0.2 meters squared. And my moment of inertia comes out to 0.16 kilogram meters squared. All right, so back to what we were doing. We just found out that 500 joules of energy was pumped into the rotation of this object. And so I can write 500 joules of rotational kinetic energy is equal to 1 half times the moment of inertia, which is 0.16 kilogram meters squared times omega squared. And I've got my answer. So I'm just going to crunch this in my calculator real quick. And I get 79.1 radians per second for the final angular speed. In part B, I want the average torque exerted by the motor. So we don't have forces in lever arms, so we're not talking about analyzing it that way. We're talking about inferring the torque based on the known moment of inertia and how fast this thing is accelerating. So that's the missing piece. How do we find out how fast it's accelerating? So I'm averaging over the whole time for this process, so I'm going to write alpha bar is the change in angular velocity divided by the change in time. So that's going to be a final angular velocity of 79.1 radians per second minus the initial, which was 0, all divided by how much time it took. And I end up with 158 radians per second squared. Then I go to the rotational version of Newton's second law, tau equals I alpha. Again, we look at torque as twisting force. Moment of inertia is the resistance to angular acceleration. In other words, how hard is it to twist something? And then alpha is the rate of change in our angular velocity. So I'm trying to get the average torque. So I'll just plug in the average angular acceleration. I is 0.16. Alpha bar is 158. And I get 25.3 Newton meters of torque exerted by the motor.